So giving thanks. Giving thanks is a gratitude, is gratitude made manifest. It is the active uh, version of gratitude. So how do we give thanks and show gratitude for the things that nourish us, even during a pandemic? How do you show up? What are the things that you do for the people that you love? How do you nourish yourself with gratitude? This is a big food holiday and, uh, and we are used to gathering together and that is going to be much more difficult this year. And so I hope that you have made plans to connect with your community, with your family, whatever that looks like <coughs> for you. So what are your gratitude practices even when things are lousy? when you don't feel well, when you can't be or do the things that you want to do. The Vipassana meditation teacher, Philip Moffat said that the practice of gratitude is not in any way a denial of life's difficulties. We live in troubling times. Having access to the joy and wonderment of life is the antidote to feelings of scarcity and loss. It allows you to meet life's difficulties with an open heart. So take a moment to find a comfortable seat for some breath work and meditation. Allow your hips to be higher than your knees so that your back can be long and tall. Beginning to create this core of strength in the middle of your body <clears throat> so that the soft tissue and the other, the extremities can begin to relax and release. If we are strong in the core, then we can soften on the outer body, releasing your neck and jaw, allowing your shoulders to drop down your back, your arms to be heavy, allowing your seat to be fully grounded, feeling your sits bones, those bony prominences at the bottom of your pelvis, making contact with the earth. Maybe it's your feet or knees or legs that are touching the ground. Notice the feeling beneath you, the sensations. Begin to notice the sound in your space beyond the sound of my voice. What are the sounds that are close by? And can you identify some sounds that are further away? Notice the light in your space. And then allow your eyes to close or take a soft gaze, an inner gaze. Drawing your attention more deeply inward to your own breath. Maybe for the first time today, noticing your breath. Being aware of your inhales. Being aware of your exhales. Noticing where you feel the inhale begin. Can you follow the inhale through the body to the sensation of fullness? Noticing the pause as the inhale becomes an exhale and then following the breath as it exits the body. Noticing the sensation of emptiness. And then the moment that the inhale takes over. Feeling your inhales and exhales. As you inhale, sit, <coughs> excuse me, sit a bit taller in your seat, reaching the crown of the head up as if you're a plant reaching for the sun. As you exhale, sink just a little deeper into the earth like a plant that's deeply planted and rooted in place. 
Inhaling, growing taller, seeking the sun. Exhaling, growing deeper, more rooted and grounded. Begin to imagine that there's a warm golden light shining on the crown of your head. Really feel the warmth, imagine the golden color lighting up the crown of your head. And then imagine this warmth, this golden light beginning to spread over the rest of your body, over your face, back of your head, your neck, shoulders, spreading all the way down your arms, warming, lighting each hand, each finger, feeling this warm <coughs> golden light dropping down your spine, lighting up the inner body over the front body, the softness, all the way down over your hips and legs, all the way to your toes. If you've ever seen a Disney movie, that moment of transformation when the, our protagonist becomes the thing they're becoming and the light spreads through their body and shoots out their fingertips and their toes. Can you feel this warmth, this golden light filling you from head to toes? Breathe into this sensation, this warm feeling. And let's take five breaths here, expanding on the inhales and rooting in place on the exhale. And after your fifth breath, come back into your natural breath and just notice if there's any after effect from this filling with golden light, this sensation of warmth. Just noticing and seeing if you can take some of that with you as we move into practice. We'll begin with sun breaths as arms float up on the inhale. And then begin to sink and lower with the exhale. Continue moving as you inhale, arms rise up. As you exhale, arms float down. Stay with the movement, beginning to Connect movement and breath. Taking the whole inhale for arms to float up. And the whole exhale for arms to float down. Some of you may know that I used to produce dance and theater performance. And I would always look for the dancer who had the energy flowing out of their body so that it wasn't just a movement like an arm raise. When the movement happened, you can see the arc of the energy flowing out the tips of their fingers, the crown of their head, whatever the body part was that was moving. So see if you can find that warm golden light flowing out through your fingertips, the crown of your head, down into the ground. One more, inhale up. And then we'll come into a side bend, right hand down. Come over with the left. Inhale here and open the side body. And then see if you can melt a little bit into the side bend. 
Use an inhale to grow tall once again, coming up and over. Inhale, open the side body. Exhale and melt, softening in to the bed. And continue using your inhale to move you from side to side, to open up from the inside out. The sensation of softening and opening. Stay with it just a few more repetitions. Moving with your breath. And this, or the next time that you come through center. Lower your arms and pause. Let's inhale and sit up nice and tall. Exhale in place. And we'll move into some twists. Inhale up. Exhale, left hand to right knee, right hand behind you. Inhale to grow tall, making space. And then exhale and twist by engaging through the muscles. Release it to inhale and get tall again. And then exhale to the other side. Stay for a breath. Make space. Exhale to twist. And then continue coming through center. Move with your breath speed. The breath informs the movement, creating space, deepening the twist. Just a few more times to each side. Beautiful. And this or the next time that you come through center, pause there. We're going to move to tabletop. If you prefer to stay seated, that is perfectly okay. And we can adapt the movement for that. So if you're coming to hands and knees, please make sure that you have some padding underneath your knees and begin to create your tabletop. With knees underneath your hips and hands or fists or elbows, forearms underneath your shoulders. If you're seated, sit up nice and tall and we'll move into some cat cow. Inhale and open the front body rolling the pelvis towards the ground or forward, softening the belly and reaching through the crown. Exhale and tuck your tailbone, draw your belly in and release your head forward. Start the movement with the pelvis rolling to open the front body and then continue as you exhale, drawing in and up. Stay with this movement seated or hands and knees. Use this as an exploration of how you are today. How are you showing up? Can you notice the places that are flowing smoothly and the places that are a little bit stuck? Coming through Neutral pelvis in stillness. Get really long, reaching the tailbone and the crown away from each other. Stay here or try extending your left leg, either behind you or out in front of you if you're seated, pressing out through the heel. Engage through your low abdomen and then maybe add the reach of an opposite arm. Get really long, stay here, or exhale and draw knee and elbow towards each other. Inhale, reach away. Can you do a few more? Exhale in and inhale, reach. Take your time in this 
strengthening practice. Maybe one more. Get long and then release and we'll come into child's pose. Toes together, knees wide apart. Sink hips to heels and release your head down towards the ground. Maybe to stacked hands or fists or even the edge of a block or pillow. If you're seated, you can come into a little bit of rounding, a little bit of curling in. And wherever you are, expand into the back body with each inhale. Exhale and soften hips to heels or into the seat. Take three more breaths. Each inhale getting bigger. Each exhale release with a sigh. <sighs> Letting it go. And after the third breath, come back to your starting position, tabletop or sitting up tall. And we'll move to the other side, extending the right leg behind you. Make sure to draw the belly in and up to create support for the low back. Stay here or add that opposite reach. Get long and strong. Inhale here and then exhale, draw knee and elbow towards each other. Inhale, reach away. Take your time. How many do you want to do on this side? And when you have completed your set with one long reach, make your way back into child's pose. Big breaths in, long sighs out. Just a few more breaths like this and we'll continue together. When you're ready, inhale and press up. And we're going to make our way all the way up to standing. I'm going to curl my toes under and press back through a squat and then come all the way up to standing. Make sure that you have your block or blocks nearby and maybe an, another form of support, either a wall or chair or a sturdy piece of furniture. Take a moment to find your Tadasana. Standing up nice and tall, maybe bringing hands to the top of your hips, rocking a little bit front and back, feeling all the parts of your feet making contact with the ground. And then come to some stillness in a balanced place so you're not leaning forward and gripping your toes, nor are you way back in your heels. Find that balanced position front to back, maybe rock a little bit side to side. Come to stillness, reach down and lift up. So arms are reaching down, feet are grounded and everything else is drawing up through the center line of the body all the way up past the crown of the head. I should see the energy moving through your fingertips, through your toes, and through the crown of the head up to the sky. Let's take three breaths here into Dasana. Getting more stable, more grounded, stronger with each breath. Ah, and then release it and shake out. We're going to do a pranayama to raise energy. It's called breath of joy. I know we've done it before. And it involves <coughs> three inhales. So inhale, 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 and then a long exhale. The inhale has arm movements and the exhale has a body movement coming forward, 
hands come to your knees and a big sound, ha, like so. So I will show you, there are two versions. You can start with the arm movements and then come into your exhale, hands to knees, or come into your exhale and come all the way down if that suits you better. So I'll demonstrate once and then we'll go into a series. So here's what it looks like. Ha! Ha! Etc. So we'll start together and it's sip, sip, sip. So you're inhaling, you know, three sips of breath with no exhale and then the long exhale with the ha sound. Now I'm going to do five and then pause for a few breaths and then do five more. This can cause a little bit of dizziness. So please make sure that you're stable, that you're supported and come out of this movement at any time and just rest in center. We'll start together, but move with your breath speed. Okay, let's take one breath together first. And we'll begin. Inhale up and exhale, come to stillness. Pause for several breaths. Make sure that you don't feel dizzy. And then you can opt into a second set or just pause in Tadasana. Up to you. We'll start together with an inhale and an exhale and begin. Exhale, release, arms down. Come to stillness when you're ready. And take several breaths, allowing your heart rate to still if it's become elevated. And noticing the sensation of this breath in your body. What does it do? Is it energizing for you? Does it bring a sense of joy or elation? Is it something else? What is it for you? We will move when you're ready into a chair pose flow. So I like to work with a block for my chair pose. I'm gonna turn sideways so that you can see the movement of my body. I like my block between my shins, but some people prefer it up between their thighs. The idea is to have something to hug in towards to give us a little bit more stability. So take a moment and decide if you're using a block and find your mountain pose. Squeezing in towards the center line of the body with or without the block, feel that sensation of lifting up, pelvic floor lifts, low abdomen lifts, chest lift. Let's take a breath, inhale up and exhale, release down. Reach down through the fingertips and up through the crown of the head. So working with our chair pose, we'll start with an inhale, reaching up, and then exhale, begin to sit back as if there's a chair behind you that's just a little too far away. Let your hands rest on your knees or thighs and reach back through the tailbone, the six bones, and reach long through the spine, through the crown of the head. Squeeze your block. Inhale here and straighten your legs a little and maybe come forward with a flat back. Next, inhale, reach forward and sit back. 
into your chair and then inhale and reach up and exhale, close, heart center. We'll go through that sequence two more times. Inhaling up, exhale into chair, maybe hands on your knees, squeezing in towards center, long spine. Inhale, get long, reach through the crown of the head, long spine. Exhale, reach forward, sit back, arms reach ahead. Make sure you can see your toes. Inhale, press down to rise up. Exhale, hands, heart center. We'll go through it one more time. Inhale up. Exhale, sit back, hands come to knees, squeeze in towards center, center. Inhale, find a long spine, half lift. Exhale, reach arms forward, sit back, squeeze in. Press down to inhale and rise up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Stay here for a few breaths. Keep squeezing in towards center, lifting up through the center line of the body. Finding a sensation of strength. And then when you're ready, remove the block. And we'll move into our next standing sequence. We're going to work with some step backs <coughs> to Crescent Warrior or Warrior One, and then we'll turn into Side Warrior or Warrior Two and go through a sequence. So I'm going to turn sideways so that you can watch my body. From here, finding your mountain pose. Let's inhale, arms up. Exhale, hands to your hips, step back with your left foot. So for Crescent Warrior, your front knee is bent over your ankle and I'm on the ball of my back foot. My hips are both pointing straight ahead. My feet are on railroad tracks, not a balance beam. If you feel wobbly, walk your feet out a little wider or take some support. Stay here or maybe inhale one or both arms up, opening through the heart, pressing back through that left heel, sinking into the right knee. We're going to exhale and draw the left arm back, right arm forward, coming into a twist. Inhale back up. This time we're going to pivot the left foot down and open into warrior two. You may need to readjust your feet a little bit. In warrior two, your front knee is bent over the ankle and tracking over middle toes. Your back leg is pressing the heel away. The toes come in at an angle. And you're intersected between your heel and your other heel or your heel and your arch. Inhale and raise your arms just to shoulder height and then turn and look over right fingertips. Inhale here, exhale and see if you can sink a little deeper into the seat of the pose. Press down through your legs and imagine you're moving them away from each other to create strength. Inhale here and then exhale and bring your right forearm to your right thigh. Maybe your left arm reaches up and over. Extended side angle. From here, we'll inhale up through warrior two. Keep that knee bent if you can. If not, you can straighten it and come back in. Turn your right palm up and exhale, lower the left hand to your thigh. Raise the right arm up. Maybe look up towards your palm or straight ahead or even towards the side. Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, release arms down, straighten your legs. And we usually turn sideways, but instead we're going to step 
the back foot up to meet the front. Yes, you with me? Find your mountain pose. I'm going to turn to the other side so that you can see me face on, but you can stay right where you are if you like. Finding your mountain pose here. Inhale and raise arms up. Exhale, hands to your hips. Step back with the right leg. Left knee is bent over the ankle. You're on the ball of the back foot. Hips are pointing straight ahead. Inhale, raise one or both arms up. Lift through the heart, through the crown. Open up through the front body, soften, and then strengthen the lower body. Big inhale up. Exhale, right arm back, left arm forward. Come into a twist. Inhale back up. And then this time, drop the right heel and open up into warrior two. You may need to readjust your feet a little bit and that's fine. So left knee over, left ankle, right heel pressing away, toes pointing this way. Make sure that you feel stable and then inhale and raise arms up to shoulder height. Now in this position, you're not leaning, you're up nice and tall and you're working to open through the hips. Look out over left fingertips, inhale here, and then exhale into extended side angle. Rest your forearm on your thigh and reach long overhead. Inhale, back to warrior two. You can straighten your leg and drop back in if you need the break. Turn left palms up, palm up, and then exhale, left palm rises, right hand comes to support you on your thigh, don't press into your knee. Maybe you turn and look up towards your extended arm or find a different head position that works best. Make sure you still have a bend in your front knee. Inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, release arms down and then step the back leg up to meet the front. Woo! Lots of strength. Strength, engagement, presence. These, for me, lead to a sensation of joy, uh, an acknowledgement of the body, the strength of the body, and my ability to be in my body. Take a moment to find your mountain pose. We're going to work through a four seasons tree pose. So feel free to get support as you need. Hands on the wall or a piece of furniture for steadiness. Begin to root down through both feet and then create your root system by pressing down through your left leg. Allow your right leg to float up, knee bend. Turn out and place the sole of the foot at your ankle, calf or thigh, just not your knee. Pressing leg against leg, take a moment <laughs> to look forward and find your focal point, something to look at that isn't moving. Let's inhale, arms to heart center. This is our springtime tree. Now we're gonna stay here for a while, so move in and out as you need to, come down to the kickstand, whatever works for you. From springtime, let's inhale and open our branches for summer, big, bright green canopy for our tree. For autumn or fall, let's drop our leaves, let them come down. And then for winter, reach down through your fingertips, up through the crown of the head. Hands come to heart center and come back to Tadasana. Take a moment here to reground, feeling your feet against the earth. Settle into the right foot, 
liberating the left, turning out and placing the foot somewhere that's not your knee. Eyes on your focal point for steadiness. Let's inhale, arms up to heart center for our springtime tree. Inhale, open up and find the summer tree, full bright canopy. From here, we'll exhale down with our leaves through autumn and then reaching down, lifting up for the winter tree. Inhale, feet down, arms up and come back to heart center. Take a few breaths here. I have gratitude for the changing of the seasons. I have gratitude for the beauty of the trees I see outside my window and my gift of watching them turn through the seasons. Let's move down to sitting. Take your time and come all the way down to your seat. Maybe taking a little bit of support from a cushion or folded blanket and grab that strap we talked about. Have it handy. So coming into, move back a little, coming into your seated posture, Sukhasana, easy pose. Take a moment to sit up nice and tall. If you feel like you're rolling onto your tailbone, sit up higher, get a cushion or blanket so that your hips come up above your knees. From here, let's extend the left leg out long and keep the right knee bent with the sole of the foot into the inner thigh. Now we sometimes do this in a wide seat. This time the front leg is going straight ahead and this of the other leg is bent and coming out to the side. <clears throat> so first, just feel this position in your body, make any adjustments that you need to make to find comfort. Maybe you need to sit up higher. If you feel a lot of pressure in your extended leg, you can always take something like a rolled up blanket or here I have this bit of mat and place it underneath your knee so that you're not hyperextending in the knee. Take a hold of your strap. My strap is kind of cool. It's got all these little hand holds on it. I love it. So take the middle of the strap and loop it around you, the ball of your foot or the sole of your foot. Let me see if I can go back up just a little bit further. So you can see my leg. It's a little better. Sitting up nice and tall, get comfortable grip on the strap. And first, just use the strap to help you sit up tall. So pull against both sides of the strap, your foot is flexed, and use it to help you sit up nice and tall. If this feels like a big stretch to you, then this is where you stay, this is your pose. And that is fantastic. If you would like a little more stretch, a little more length in the back of your leg, begin to walk forward. Now, I'm not curling forward. I'm tipping forward from my hips, right? So my spine is still long and I'm reaching through the crown of my head. So see if you'd like to walk a little further forward. My dandy strap has handholds right here, so I can take a hold of those and pull back gently to keep lengthening my spine, even as I come forward over my extended leg. Make sure that you can breathe comfortably wherever you are. I prefer not to have us round towards our legs. 
because that puts a lot of pressure on the spine. So let's stay with a long spine. And we'll do three more breaths wherever you are. If it feels uncomfortable, back up. Come to the place right before the place that feels uncomfortable. And then after your third breath, you can release your strap and carefully walk back up to sitting. Remove the strap and extend both legs. Little tiny bounces, maybe some windshield wiper action to release any gripping that there might be in your hips. Extending the, le the right leg, let's bend the left knee and draw the sole of that foot in. So this leg, the right leg is coming straight out from my hip. I'm facing straight forward. This leg is bending <coughs> and opening. Now, if this is causing you discomfort, you can walk your foot forward. You can even take a block and place it underneath your knee for a little extra support. I should have said that on the other side. Grab your strap and see if you can loop it around the ball of the extended leg, the ball of the foot, or maybe it could be the arch or the ball, whatever feels better. And first use the strap to help you to sit up nice and tall. So a little bit of pull allows you to extend your spine long, reaching through the crown of the head. And maybe you stay right here. And maybe you'd like to come forward. What I do is I bring my straps together so that I can walk forward. And then find the place of edge, like where you feel that, you know, this is the edge of your stretch. Come to your first edge. And then hold on to each side of the strap and pull to inhale and get long through your spine. So we're staying with a long spine, tipping from the hips. Maybe you can walk a little further forward. Like I said, I have this cool strap that has little handholds right here. Now make sure that your foot is balanced so you're not pulling the big toe side towards you more than the pinky toe. If anything, you want a little more pinky toe. Inhale to get long and exhale, come forward. Find your stretch, your working stretch. Breathe into the sensations. Back up if you need to. And then release the strap and carefully walk yourself back up. Release the strap if you have a block or other support and bring soles of feet together, knees apart. Maybe rock a little bit from side to side. And that head to knee pose that we just did, some people feel it in the backs of their legs and some people feel it in their hips, in the bent leg side. So give yourself a minute to release here. Inhale and grow a lot nice and tall, reach long through your spine. Exhale, see if you can release in your hips just a little bit more to let your knees drop. Just a few more breaths here. And release, press into your fingertips. Use your hands to help your knees come in so you can extend your legs out long, coming into a wide seat. Now here, your knees and toes should be pointing towards the ceiling. Some of us tend to drop out and others of us drop in. So find that natural, uh, maybe it's not the natural, <laughs> maybe it's, you have to work at it, but find that aligned place in your legs. Inhale and sit up nice and tall. Again, maybe you need to sit up on something to get this forward tilt of the pelvis so you can sit up tall. 
And from here, begin to tip forward. So I'm just moving from my hips. I'm not rounding my back. My back stays long and I'm just bending forward at the hip. Now maybe you're at your end point right here and that is perfect. And maybe you have a little more or a lot more space to come forward. Use your hands against your mat to help you get long through your spine. On each inhale, pull back with your hands, same as we did with the strap, right? To get nice and long through the spine. On your exhales, you can soften. Inhales, get long, reach through the crown of your head. Exhale, soften forward. Two more breaths. And last one. Beautiful, press into your fingertips to walk yourself back up. Give your legs an assist to move in a little closer. And last time we'll bounce this out very gently and rock and roll here. We're going to move all the way down onto our backs. Uh, I don't think we're gonna use the strap, but might have it handy. Finding your way onto your back. We'll have just work with a little bit here and then we'll move into a little rest and meditation. So lying on your back with your knees bent, go ahead and draw your knees up towards your heart, maybe rocking from side to side. I have one hand on each knee. Maybe you like to have hands behind your thighs. Let's take a moment here to enjoy this. Uh, it's really child's pose on your back. Draw it in. Now let's hold on to the right knee and allow the left foot to come down. Now you can keep your left knee bent or if it would feel okay in your body, you can extend that leg, letting it rest on the mat, pressing out through your heel. So you've got this nice dynamic tension between the knee drawing in and the other heel reaching out. So stay here, or if you'd like, begin to lift your extended leg and just come up and hover over the ground or come a little higher. Stay here or draw your belly in and lift your shoulders and head as if you could bring your nose to your knee. Make sure you can still inhale here. Exhale and squeeze in towards center. One more inhale and exhale, squeeze and then let it all go and come into a mini Shavasana. Now, if lifting your head and shoulders hurts your neck, then keep your head and shoulders down. Or really engage through your abdominal muscles and let your chin come forward, right? Instead of tucking your chin, that can help sometimes with neck pain. So one more side, let's draw both knees in and rock a little bit from side to side. And then we'll hold on to that left knee and allow the right foot to come down. And again, you can have your knee bent or you can extend the leg pressing out through your heel. Active legs in this sequence. Pulling that left knee in, reaching away with the right. Stay here or let that dynamic tension and the long reach allow the leg to float up into the air. Stay here or exhale, pressing down and in with your abdominal muscles, lifting your shoulders and head, nose towards your knee. Make sure you can inhale here and then exhale and squeeze in tighter. One more inhale. 
and exhale, squeeze in and let it all go. Mini Shavasana. Relaxing through your shoulders and neck, through your hips and legs. Big breath in and long exhale. Take a moment to set yourself up on your back, if you like, for a little meditation and Shavasana. So that might include adding a bolster or pillows under your knees, or maybe a pillow under your head, a blanket over you if your space is cold. What do you need to find a comfortable place for some meditation and rest. Take your time and find your way into your posture. Shavasana is a posture, it's a pose. Allow the body to settle, feeling heavy against the earth the earth below you supporting you, the sky above you, draw it in like a blanket. Relaxing through your feet and legs, your hips, your shoulders and arms, the back of your head heavy against the ground. Bring your attention to your breath, breathing in and out. Gentle breath, natural breath. Begin to imagine the people for whom you're grateful. Allow them to in your mind's eye, array themselves in front of you. Maybe it's a few people, maybe it's many people, <coughs> people who are still with us or people who are far away or departed. And allow them to walk up to you one by one. As they approach, see them in front of you, see their faces, their eyes. Take a moment to tell them you're grateful for them. Maybe even tell them why. And when you feel completion with one person, allow them to fade into the background and have the next person come forward. This is not a long conversation, just a moment to see their face, Look into their eyes and let them know that you're grateful for them. Take your time. Acknowledging each person that steps up. and your gratitude for their role in your life, or the things that they've done in the world. Begin to notice the sensation of gratitude and where you feel it in your body. As you complete your process of expressing gratitude, turn your attention to that sensation in your body. Begin to bring your breath right to that place and imagine that you can expand that space with each inhale so that it grows and the sensation travels enveloping your whole 
body. Allow it to grow and grow, expanding outward. Bathing yourself, your space, your community with the sensation of gratitude. We'll take just a few moments to rest. In the end, we have no guarantee of tomorrow. Life is a vapor. And sometimes no matter how just we might be, the rain finds us anyway. But one thing firmly in our control is the hue with which we paint circumstances that come our way. So if gratitude has nothing to do with the amount we have, and everything to do with the heart we have, let's make our grateful hearts a little bigger today. Begin to deepen your breath, bringing small movements into fingers and toes. When you're ready, roll to one side and pause. and then press into your fingertips, coming up to sitting, allowing your attention to remain deeply inward for just another moment or two. We'll seal our practice with three chants of Om, one for love of self, one for love of friends and family, 
and one for the community we create when we practice together. Bringing hands to heart center, we'll inhale together. Oh. 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 Om Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. I am grateful for each and every one of you.